Good morning, y'all, and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us. And by us, I have a co-assistant today. Hi. So by now, you guys know, we are no longer traveling full-time in an RV. And this is a question we get asked a lot. Was full-time RV living worth it? And that's a very complicated question but we're gonna do our best to try to answer that for you today. And in order to answer that question, we have to go back to the beginning and how we even got started full-time living. All right, so our full-time journey began in 2020. Unlike much to y'all, the uh, world was a very weird place that year and it got us thinking what was important in life. Well, what was important in life is we were tired of working all the time for things. Also, we were missing out on hanging out with friends and family. So we had this crazy idea. We were gonna buy an RV so we could start hanging out with people more often. We started down the YouTube rabbit hole and we were just looking for an RV that would fit our family so that we could do the weekend warrior thing and go visit friends and family whenever Kevin was off of work. So we started spending every single weekend driving all over the Dallas-Fort Worth area looking at RVs and checking off which ones we thought we could go camping in. And we had a long list of things we thought we needed and things we thought we wanted. And at the end of the day, I kept saying, man, that is a lot of money to spend on an RV that we're just gonna use a few weekends a year. We quickly started looking at larger rigs because we wanted to be comfortable while we were traveling. And to justify the cost, we started thinking maybe our detached garage, we could rework it, make it a shop so that we could set up this RV as a guest bedroom for all of our guests that come to the lake to visit us. Because by this point, we had two children and we were out of guest rooms in our home. So then we started looking at these giant toy haulers and the more we looked the more we wanted them but we just could not justify that kind of money unless we were going to use it all the time and that's where we started talking about what was important in life because I had to tell Alicia one day I was like I have a great job a great paying job but it requires me to work 300 plus days a year away from home and I made the offhanded comment one day because we were watching the YouTube rabbit holes and we came across all these families who were traveling full time, living on the road in an RV. And we weren't there for that, we were there to look at their RVs, it tours their RVs, but it got me thinking. I said at one time, you know, if we sold all this stuff we have, we could buy that RV and hit the road full time and be like one of those crazy YouTube families we see on TV. And even with two small children, it didn't take much convincing on my part to get us to the point where we knew that was what we were gonna do. So she let me go to work and when I came home, she goes, were you serious when you said that we should sell all this and hit the road? And I was like, if we sold everything, I could quit that job and we would have enough money to go explore the United States for two years and then we could figure out what we were gonna do in life. But we would be a heck of an adventure for those two years. So she said, I'll believe you when you sell the bass boat and the Shelby. And quickly, the Shelby and the bass boat were gone. Also, very quickly, was everything we owned, including our house, which brought us the first time we lived with Lolo and Phil. The first of many, by the way. So our house sold before we ever bought a dually or an RV, and that kind of put us in a predicament because we knew that we wanted to travel full time, but we no longer had a home. So we were kind of homeless, but we were looking for the perfect RV, which you guys have seen on this channel. We found the RV. Now, Looking back, it probably wasn't the perfect one, but it was a great RV for what we were doing. So we found the RV, it was in Virginia. I had to borrow my buddy's dually. We drove to Virginia overnight, picked it up and drove back because I had to go back to work. So we did a 44 hour road trip to pick up the RV, sight unseen. He did do a FaceTime tour of us, of the RV, but we literally did not see it until we picked it up in Virginia and at least didn't see it until it was parked back here in Texas. So then things got serious. We had our RV, we had our truck, and we were about to hit the road on our full-time adventure. Except for we had no idea how to do anything. We actually owned the RV for about three months while we finalized the rest of our life. You know, I kept my job for a while, ended on good terms. We made some improvements to the RV and the truck because we knew full-time living was gonna take its toll on those. And then we spent our last Christmas at home with the family before hitting the road. Now granted, we had not slept in the RV yet. We owned it for four months. We were still staying at Phil and Lolo's house. Our first night sleeping in the RV was on our way to Florida. We slept in a truck stop. 
didn't even know how to turn the generator on or anything like that. We just pulled over to a truck stop and said, let's do RV stuff. The crazy thing was, is on our first trip out, we actually made it all the way to Florida. We considered keeping on going. We just had a few more hours to go, but I think we were on hour like 19. 19. 19 hours of driving. 19 hours of driving. And then we had to figure out how to even use this RV in a truck stop. So it was an adventure from the very first night. So we made it to our first campground in our RV and we decided the only way to learn how to live full time was we had to leave Texas and we had to stay away from Texas. So we stayed in Florida for six weeks. And at first it was like camping. It was a vacation. It took us about a month to realize that this is not really a full-time vacation. It's just a different way of living. But it gave us time to reevaluate and reorganize the way we were living our life and move towards the way that we wanted to live. Most importantly, it got us out of the rat race of life where you just work to live and live to work. So we kind of broke ourselves from that within that first six week period. So after our first six week trial, we decided to come back home to Texas and we hung out with Phil and Lolo a little longer before we hitting the road full-time and finally leaving the state of Texas. We did some upgrades and some major improvements to the RV because we learned some things in our first six weeks out that we knew would eventually need to be addressed if we were gonna live in it full time. And once we got all that finalized, we hit the road. Our first big adventure was out west. I believe it was a nine month trip out west. And we started it in Big Bend, Texas, and we went through Arizona, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, North South Dakota, Kansas, Nebraska. We saw it all and it was I'm not going to lie. It was one of the best things we've ever done as a family. That trip out west, that was an amazing trip. It was. It was an epic trip. And we came home with a little souvenir from Kansas. The souvenir was Caden. <laughs> Caden was a souvenir from Kansas. <laughs> so we made it home by Christmas of that year. Caden still needed, needed time to bake. And we just spent time with family over the holidays, kind of resetting and resting from our big nine month trip out. And then came trip number two. And since Alicia had a baby on board, she wanted a baby moon. So instead of going on this big epic adventure somewhere, we decided to give her a beach trip. And we started in Gulf Shores, Alabama, and we worked our way along the coast of Florida, down to Orlando, jumped across the Atlantic side, and worked our way all the way up to Charleston, South Carolina, before coming back home to have baby Caden. I'll just say I'm a beach girl by heart and it was the best baby moon I've ever had. I'd do that again in a heartbeat. So then we came back home to Texas and we stayed with Phil and Lolo for the second time now. And we had baby Caden. And the reason we did that is because Alicia had a C-section. So we decided to move into the house so she could recover. So with two small children already and then a C-section, if any of you have had that, you know you need time to recover. You also need help with your other children. So it just made sense for us to spend about three months at Phil and Lolo's so that we could get rested and ready to hit the road again. So after Alicia recovered, we decided to kick off the end of the summer with an epic camping trip with Phil and Lolo and Thomas and Beverly. So we headed right down the road to Toledo Bend Lake and decided to do three weeks before hitting the road full time as a family of five now. And on our very last night there, Alicia was walking to the dark and decided to fall down in the world's largest ditch and break both bones in her leg. And by largest ditch, we mean about that big of a step off. And yes, I broke my left leg and almost broke my right foot too, but thankfully that didn't happen. And so that set us back another three months. We left the lake, moved back in with Phil and Lolo while she had surgery on her leg and we had to recover a second time. And this time we decided to wait until Thanksgiving to hit the road again. So we loaded the family up. We head to Branson, Missouri with Phil and Lolo and Thomas and Beverly again. We spent Thanksgiving with my side of the family in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And then we came back home for Christmas that year. And we learned something. In that three week trip out, we learned that the things we did as a family of four don't work as a family of five. By that point, we were used to traveling pretty fast and doing all the things. And when you have a newborn, it just completely changes your life. <laughs> Slows you down significantly. So then we came back home for Christmas and we made a plan to hit the road on our most epic trip ever, which is the trip you guys just saw last year. We were gone for 11 months and we saw 20 states. We went from Texas all the way up the East Coast to Maine and we zigzagged our way back down through the Midwest back to Texas. And it was the most epic of epic trips. It was the longest, most grueling, most 
amazing trip we have ever done. So that completed our third year on the road and it got us to 40 of the 50 states that we wanted to see. It was a pretty epic trip. And by this time, we're already planning next year's adventures because we knew that we were eight states away from the lower 48 and we knew that we wanted to try to get all 50. We know that Hawaii and Alaska may not have happened with that RV, but for sure the remaining eight in the lower 48 we could get done. But then our RV traveling came to a halt because we had frame failure. And you guys now know that we no longer own the RV and our full-time RV traveling is now over. So after telling you the history of what our full-time life was like, you have to ask yourself the question, was all that worth it? If you're asking me, it absolutely was worth it. I agree with Alicia. Full-time living for us was worth it. But before we tell you why, you have to understand what our goals were. Our goal for full-time living was never for it to be a permanent long-term solution. For us, it was supposed to be a two-year family adventure to help us reset and learn what's important in life. Instead of working to buy things, we wanted to learn to enjoy the experiences we have as a family. Whenever someone's gone 300 days a year sometimes, you realize that all you really want is time spent with family and friends. That's all that's ultimately important in life. And so working to buy things just was no longer important to us. Now, our goals did change a little bit along the way because we started making YouTube videos. And now we never intended for YouTube to be any source of income. It became enough income that it was gonna allow us to start traveling more without depleting our savings. So then our goals changed. Instead of just being a two-year plan, we had this goal, now let's, let's see all 50 states and then we'll go back to a sticks and bricks life. We are so thankful that YouTube did provide us that opportunity to keep traveling thanks to you guys. And that was an amazing experience. So while our original goal was just two years, YouTube allowed us to go for a third year and we honestly probably would have considered going for the last of the 50 states had our RV not broken. Now it's unfortunate that the RV did break and we had to make a choice and at the time the smarter financial choice was not to dump any more money into the RV just to go see eight more states. It was also not a very smart choice to, to find another RV just to go check out their last remaining eight states. So a lot of people, whenever our frame broke, they were like, well, just get a new RV and continue your lifestyle. Well, our lifestyle was kind of coming to a close because we just needed eight more states and we truly felt we were gonna go finish that within a few months of the next trip out. And so it didn't make sense for us to go buy a new RV to go hit those last eight states. And that's because from the beginning, our original plan was not to live and travel full time forever. It was just to use this as a break to get away and learn what's important in life. It's very unfortunate that we weren't able to achieve our last goal of seeing all 50 states before we got done with the RV Live. But that doesn't mean we're not gonna see all 50. We just aren't gonna see all 50 while we're doing the RV lifestyle. We are gonna see all 50 eventually with the kids. It'll just come in a very different form than it used to be. So that brings up the question, would we do it again? Absolutely, 100%. Even if I knew the script to the story, knowing that the RV would fail, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I think I'm right there with you. As long as I knew the frame was gonna fail and no one was gonna get hurt, I would absolutely do this again. This was the most fun and most intentional living I think that we've ever done and you just can't put a price tag on it. Like it was amazing. See, I grew up with grandparents who had RVs and we went on epic trips every summer. It was always about where we're we going next summer with grandma and grandpa. And it was the most amazing thing. I tell my kids these stories all the time. Well, when I got to take them on those, I don't have to tell them the stories anymore. They're part of the stories. And it was awesome seeing, I, honestly, most of the time I saw things for the first time with them. And it was awesome to see it through their eyes and what their experiences were, along with what our experiences were by seeing those places for the first time as well. That's exactly what I was gonna say. And we haven't talked about this. Like experiencing something, and it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't have to be some epic trip out. Like experiencing something for the first time yourself while your kids are also experiencing it for the first time is just a feeling that you you want to keep doing over and over again i think and that's what RVing did for us like it exposed us to so many new things that it was absolutely worth it and i also had a job where i traveled the entire world and i got to see lots of places and lots of things and i think it's important as a person for you to understand there is more than what's outside your city limit sign 
Not saying that it's not bad to stay at home, but you truly appreciate home once you go out there and see the rest of the world experience how different it can be because the world is a big, amazing place. And in order to appreciate home, you have to see everybody else's home and what they live into. So that brings us to the question, what would you do differently the next time? Well, that depends. Do I have my experiences already or am I starting from scratch again? I think if you have your experiences again, if you were given the opportunity to do it again, would you? Okay, because if I didn't have my experiences, I'd do exactly the same thing because that seemed like a great idea at the time. Exactly. But now that I know what I know now, 100% I would do it. It's almost exactly the same way, but we'd have a much smaller rig. We would still have a fifth wheel, but it'd probably be about 35 feet long max. We'd still use a dually because you still need a dually for a family of five. We would probably travel a little slower from the beginning because in the beginning, I mean, we were, we were getting it. We, we were moving like every seven days for like months on end. And sometimes we would be in a state for a month and a half. We might move five or six times in that month and a half because we wanted to see every part of the state. That was an amazing adventure, but that starts to wear on you. So I think I would definitely slow down. And we also, we did slow down in the end, but I think we slowed down not because we were tired. We slowed down because we knew the more we moved the RV, the more it broke. So we stopped moving the RV as much. And then that kind of went the opposite way. We stayed places too long and we kind of got settled. It worked out. We learned our, our normal thing was seven to 10 days, but we tried seven and that was too fast. And we tried 14 and that was too slow. So I think seven to 10 days is the way you want to go. But I think I would also slow it down. Like our last trip out, probably not doing 20 states. We'll probably do 10 in a year, you know? Give each state like a month. Okay, here's my things I would do differently. I'm with you that slow things down, but I'm also with you while you're in the state, do the things because a lot of the RVers we met were like, oh, just do this portion. You can always come back here. You'll always, you can come back another time. Well, look at us. In our case, we're not going back, not at least in a full-time RV rig. So I'm glad we went hard and we did all the things because we kind of checked off all the major things in each state. But here's what I would do differently. I would make sure to keep some type of home base. We are very fortunate that we have my parents that allow us to move in anytime for any period of time. So we had a place to kind of get out of the RV and decompress. Even if you're just buying like a small piece of land or keeping a small piece of land just to put a pad on or maybe a water hookup, sewer hookup, all that, I would, I would have a home base. Somewhere you could park your own rig where you don't have to pay to have it parked there in a campground. Also a place that you can work on it without having to ask for permission and do all kinds of things to the RV because RV parks don't like that kind of thing. So, would I do it again? Absolutely. Would I change some things? Probably. Now the last question is, is full-time RV living good for you? In order to know if this is gonna work for you, you have to know what your goals are. If you're gonna live full-time in an RV, are you gonna be the traveling type who likes to go and see and do all the things? Are you going to be the stationary type who likes to settle down somewhere in a very nice location, usually Florida? <laughs> yes, yeah, so we met so many people that they would go travel hard for a few months and then when it became what I call Florida season, they head to Florida, they park it, and they relax for those summer months, which I think is awesome uh, if you want to take it at a slower pace. You also have to figure out how many things you want to do. Are you a go-go getter? Are you like to just hang out and barbecue and grill? Because that definitely affects the kind of rig and the way you travel and the way you make plans. Because you can see as many of the things you want or you can just enjoy the campgrounds as much as you want, like Phil in his chair. <laughs> right, there's definitely different types of travelers out there. Also, I'd say if you have a spouse, make sure you and your spouse are on the same page because you might be a go-go getter and Phil might be, I wanna sit in this chair and not move. And how's that gonna work out for you guys? Are you gonna go explore things by yourself or is he gonna come along every now and then? So you gotta figure these things out, you gotta have these conversations, but also I say, do you have the budget for repairs? I think that's a big one. We thought our most expensive expenses would be diesel, RV parks, and adventures. And those were actually pretty cheap compared to how much you spend to keep the RV in the truck maintained and repaired to travel down the road. Now that's mostly because we were go-go getters. We were on the road all the time. If you travel less than us, likely you will have less expenses than us. But our goal was to see as much as we could in the shortest amount of time. So those are some things you have to consider. Can I afford to do the things I think I wanna do? Because things out there are expensive. 
Now, if you slow it down, you can slow down your spending, but you also slow down the amount of things you can see. The other thing I think that is important, especially if you're like from Texas, where you just pretty much have hot season all the time, you don't realize that the rest of the United States has actual seasons, and so you need to prepare your travels based on those seasons. Like when we went up north to Maine and all those states, you can only go in a very short window of time so you have to prepare for that because you need to get there before the snow shows up and you need to get out before the snow shows up so if you don't want to get caught in a northeast winter i say prepare for seasons <laughs> seasons is a thing we had to learn the hard way we had only rv'd in texas and florida and we just assumed everything was open 24 7. turns out a lot of places don't open till april and they close down september really on labor day it's like we're closed you got to get out of here and we're like why we have this thing called winter it comes here and messes everything up so that was one of the things that led to some of our travel plans being so aggressive because they're so far away from Texas, we had to spend a long time getting there. We had to enjoy it as fast as we could and we had to get out of there before winter caught us. So for us, when we started this crazy lifestyle, we had an idea that we would buy an RV and a truck. We'd travel the United States for two years. When we got done, we'd sell the RV and the truck, we'd sell it on somewhere and we would take those life experiences and use them to better ourselves in our new path of life. Well, that sort of happened. We traveled for three years, we sold the RV, well, we sold it for a price that was good enough to make us happy. It was not the sale price we would have liked to have. We still have the truck and we've sailed down and we're enjoying what our experiences have taught us about life. It can be easy to say, oh, we missed our goal of hitting all 50 states. But in all honesty, in our original plans, that was never our goal. We never said, oh, we wanna hit all 50 states in two years. That was just a goal we made along the way once we started making money through YouTube. So I feel like we accomplished our goals and I feel like we can still accomplish our second goal of hitting all the states. We just won't do it in an RV. So where does that leave us now? Well, there's a reason we chose the name paving new paths well that one says pave your own path but there's a reason we went with that name because we knew that we would not be tied to the rv lifestyle forever right we we wanted something that could travel with us no matter what path of life we were on so we were very intentional in picking our channel name and we did all this before we even made our first video or even knew that you could make money from youtube we just knew that whatever happened we wanted a name that would not be rv related so what does that mean for our channel? Well, we're not going anywhere. We're actually just gonna keep filming everything we're doing. I know you guys have been watching me ranch for a while. You've been watching me call bingo. You've been watching me do all kinds of things. Well, right now we're exploring what our next path in life is and we're gonna bring you guys along. And we're gonna continue to show you all the things and all the people in our lives. Yes, I think some of you will be happy to know that we're not turning into a ranching channel. Some of you will probably be sad to know we're not turning into a ranching channel. So are we, we turning into a bird channel? We are turning into a bird channel, apparently. They are not happy about our choice to be here. Listen, we're trying to film. <laughs> oh, look, oh, they don't that. they don't listen as good as your cows and horses do. Oh my gosh. Okay, are we done? We're no. They're like my children. Hey. I'll get the last word. No, I'll get the last word. <laughs> oh, I thought I did it. Anybody a bird whisperer out there? Melinda, I'm looking at you. How do we handle this? Okay, we're just gonna go with it. Sorry for the birds, y'all, but we're almost done. Uh, so, we are not turning into a ranching channel. We will still probably have some ranching on the channel whenever it permits time for him to film. But we're exploring ways of where myself, the children, Phil, Lolo, everybody, the gang can all be on the channel. So just hang tight with us because we have some things in the works. Anyway, guys. Thanks for watching. We love you. Say bye, birds. They love you too.